Um, regarding the exam one, there are two possibilities. I can give you the exam back on Wednesday, but Wednesday is also career day. And most of you are, are probably juniors and seniors, right? Or at least sophomores, so I think you should be going to career day to uh, to try to get jobs or internships. Because this class is right in the middle of career day. Um, I still plan to have class. So <laughs> I'm encouraging you to go find a job. Uh, but I also have an obligation to be teaching you during this time too. Um, I'm going to record the, the lecture as before if you're not here, but obviously if you're not here, uh, the exam is a physical copy, right? So uh, I can either give back the exam on Wednesday, but that kind of forces you to come to class during career day, or I can give it back to you on Friday. And I don't have a strong preference for one or the other. So why don't we put it to a vote? Okay, so who wants the exam back on Wednesday? And who wants the exam back on Friday? I think most of you don't care then, huh? You don't want the exam back at all? <laughs> okay, there's a... Uh, a slight majority for Wednesday. So I'll give you the exam back on Wednesday. But I still encourage you to go to career day. <clears throat> okay, um, we were talking about how to make a difference amplifier and we used superposition to arrive at this equation by also making sure that the ratio of uh, R4 and R3 were the same as the ratio of R2 to R1. Uh, so, so this is this is the uh, output voltage of this configuration if R4 over R3 is equal to R2 over R1. And if we rearrange, so we just factor out R2 over R1, then we get what we want because if we say R2 over R1 is equal to um, our differential gain factor, then our output voltage is uh, A sub D multiplied by the difference of VI2 minus VI1, which is what we wanted to get for a difference amplifier. Okay, but that's only a part of the story of our difference amplifier because we want to have some differential gain, but we also want the common mode gain to go to zero. In other words, if there's any signal uh, that's, in, that's in common between the inputs V1 and uh, VI1 and VI2. We do not want that to have any gain at all. We don't want it to appear at the output at all. Okay, so in order to figure out um, how a common mode signal propagates uh, through the amplifier, we just have to first assume that we have uh, some common signal applied to both inputs. Okay, so this point here used to be my VI1 signal was here, and my VI2 signal used to be there. But now let's just set both of those voltages equal to some uh, to a, the same voltage. So that's going to be VI CM. And let's figure out uh, what the 
uh, output will be if I have the same voltage applied to both inputs. Okay, so in order to do this, we are first going to figure out the voltage at this node and this node, the inverting and, and non-inverting inputs uh, to the op amp. Okay, so if I only look at um, this lower part of the circuit, let me just consider that by itself for now. So that's VICM. And I'm looking for what is that voltage. <clears throat> so I can get this by uh, doing a voltage divider because this is going into the op amp, so that resistance looking into the op amp is infinite, so it's not affecting my, my voltage divider. Okay, so I can use the voltage divider equation to solve for this V. So that V is equal to this equation. R4 over R3 plus R4. Okay, so that is, uh, let me call this a, something besides V. Let's call this Vx. Okay, so that's the voltage at this point in the circuit. Now, I also know that uh, the voltage at this node, the node at the inverting input, is going to be the same. That will also be a voltage Vx. And that's because of that um, virtual short condition for the op amp. Okay, and now so now I know uh, the voltage here. So let's figure out uh, some of the currents. So we'll do that on the next slide. Everyone okay so far? Okay, so I have a current R1 here. I just said that this voltage Vx was equal to R4 over R4 plus R3 times the input voltage VICM. And I want to figure out uh, an equation for I1. Okay, so what's my equation going to be for I1? Voltage at this side of the resistor, oops, minus the voltage at the other side of the resistor, divided by the resistance. So what is I1? What's my first voltage? VICM minus Vx over R1, and that will tell me what I1 is. Okay, so this is going to be equal to Vicm. Let's substitute for Vx. So it's R4 over R4 plus R3 times Vicm all over R1. And if I want to make this look a little bit nicer, then it will be VICM times R3 over R4 plus R3 times 1 over R1. OK, and once I know I1, I can now figure out the equation for the output voltage. Why is that? Well, let's write an equation uh, for the output voltage uh, based on a, a KVL. And let's do a, 
let's do a key VL around this path here. Okay, so my output voltage is going to be equal to what? Start at this voltage, Vx, and minus the voltage across this resistor, R2, and that those two resistances uh, or this, sorry, this voltage minus this voltage should be equal to the output voltage. So the output voltage is Vx minus the voltage dropped across resistor R2, which is I2 times R2. Or Vx is R4 over R4 plus R3 times VI CM and I2 this, this current here is the same as I1 because no current's going into the input of the op amp. So instead of writing I2 I change it to I1 and we already have an equation for I1 Okay, so if I substitute all of that, you need to do some algebra, and you'll come out with this last equation. So this is going to be the voltage at the output of the op amp. Uh, if you have the same signal going into both inputs. So there's going to be uh, there's going to be some voltage um, at the output of the op amp. Um, if I have this uh, uh, common mode signal or the same signal applied to both inputs and it depends on the values of the re resistors that I choose <clears throat> so let's figure out let's, let's quantify that a little bit so let's instead of writing it just as the, the voltage Let's write it in terms of the common mode gain. Okay, so I'm just going to take... This is our equation from the last slide. And I'm just going to normalize the left-hand side by the common mode voltage. So I'm left with the second equation here. And let's look at the second term in the bracket. So... Remember, in order to make this difference amplifier work, we chose that R4 over R3 is equal to R2 over R1. So if I plug this relationship back into here, then this term within this bracket actually goes to zero. So what this is predicting is that so if this term is zero, then our common mode gain is zero. So this is predicting that if I had the conditions that I designed this for in order to make this difference amplifier, uh, I'm going to have a, a zero common mode gain. So this amplifier theoretically uh, operates as an ideal difference amplifier. Uh, but in real life, you're not going to be able to perfectly match these resistor ratios. So, the second term, in a real amplifier, the second term doesn't go to zero. <coughs> Even though, theoretically, it does. Once you make this circuit, uh, this will be a non-zero term. Okay, so, 
there's a, a finite uh, common mode gain if I don't have resistors that perf perfectly match each other. And in real life, you won't because there's always going to be some variation in the resistor values. Uh, later on, we'll go through an example of this and look at um, how resistor tolerances are going to affect this common mode uh, gain. But before we do that, um, so we know so far that our difference amplifier meets our original function. Uh, which was, forget that, to have some uh, differential gain multiplying the difference between two input signals. And if our resistors are perfectly matched, then our common mode gain happens to go to zero. So, so far, this is a very good implementation of a difference amplifier. But since we're looking at an amplifier, let's also look at uh, input resistance. Okay, so we're going to figure out uh, what the input resistance is going to be. And to do that, we're going to make a, a couple of assumptions. So here we're assuming that R3, this resistor used to be R3. It's equal to R1. And this resistor used to be R4. We're going to set that equal to R2. And that's the conditions that we need to have in order to make sure that our, our common mode uh, gain is zero and that it's functioning as a difference amplifier. Okay, so now we have four resistors, but two of them have the same values. And the other two have the, the same value as well. Okay, so we want to figure out Uh, what is this input resistance? Uh, assuming we have some difference between the, the two input terminals. So this is still going to be VI1, and this voltage is still VI2, but it's just represented by this voltage, VID, which is the difference between VI1, oh, sorry, VI2 minus VI1. Okay, because we have uh, a virtual short between these two terminals, if we just write a, a loop equation, uh, a KVL around this, then we will get, so we're doing a KVL Sorry, this is getting a little busy, but we're, we're doing a KVL around this loop. Okay, so the voltage VID will be equal to the voltage that we drop across this resistor R1. This is a virtual short, so there's no voltage between these two terminals. And then we also need to add up the voltage that's dropped across this top resistor R1. Okay, so both of them have a current uh, I, I, I flowing, flowing through them. So that's that. And if I want to figure out the resistance then, I'm going to divide the voltage divided by uh, that current, I, I. So this is going to be uh, my input resistance equation. And the value uh, of this, this I, I is going to depend uh, upon the, uh, the, volt, the differential voltage that I'm applying and the values of R1. So if I want to have a large input resistance, that means I want to have, in this equation, uh, I want to make my uh, input current as small as possible. In order to make my input current as small as possible, in order to satisfy the second equation, that means R1 needs to be large. Right? If, I'm, if I'm saying that I just have a certain uh, differential input voltage, 
and I want to make my input current as small as possible. That means my R1 has to be as large as possible in order to satisfy the second equation. Okay, so that's uh, the condition that we have in order to get a high input resistance is that we have to have a, a large R1. But our differential gain term was R2 over R1. So it's a similar kind of problem as I have with the uh, inverting op amp. If I make R1 large in order to get a high input resistance, my gain is going to decrease because I'm making the denominator of my differential gain larger. So there's some trade-offs uh, with this particular difference amplifier. Um, in addition, another drawback of uh, making a difference amplifier the way that this is done is that it isn't that easy to adjust this differential gain. Because this differential gain is dependent upon uh, R2 to R1, but remember if I relabel this back as, as R3 and R4, it also depends on making sure that um, R, R4 and R3 are the same as R2 and R1. So if I want to change my gain, let's say I want to change resistor R2 so that I can change my differential gain, I also have to change resistor R4 by the exact same amount. So I need to change two resistors at the same time and change them by the same amount in order to adjust the gain uh, in this design. So there's some uh, drawbacks with making a difference amplifier this way. One, I'm limited in either the amount of input resistance or the amount of gain. And two is that it's a little bit hard to adjust the gain uh, in this circuit. So there is another way to make a difference amplifier, and that's something called the instrumentation amplifier. And this is what the circuit looks like. So it's a, a cascaded up amp circuit. So what this is, is the original difference amplifier is the output stage of the instrumentation amplifier. And this used to be uh, VI1, and this used to be VI2. But now what those voltages are, are those are outputs from uh, two input stages that we have connected to a different amplifier. And these two input stages are non-inverting op amps. Okay, so because I put the non-inverting op amps in front of the inputs to my difference amplifier, my non-inverting op amps have an input resistance of what? Uh, my input is directly into the non-inverting terminal, so my input resistance should be infinite. Okay, so the input resistance of this overall amplifier is also infinite because I just care about what I see looking into the inputs of the amplifier. So if this was if this was this this whole circuit was in a box. These are my two input terminals. My input resistance is what's the resistance looking into the input. And that's the same as the input resistance looking into my non-inverting op amp. So it's infinite. OK, so the, the input resistance to this cascaded op amp circuit is infinite. Um, so this appears to be a 
a better difference amplifier. But uh, we don't actually make, this is not what's inside of an instrumentation amplifier. The reason is because um, you have your, your signal and it's amplified by this input stage by the non-inverting op amps. And you could already start uh, saturating uh, your op amps because you're, you're amplifying through these non-inverting op amps in the first stage. Uh, in addition, if I have a common mode signal, so if I have some part of the signal in common to both VI1 and VI2, I'm amplifying that part of the signal as well. And that's not what I want the, the difference amplifier to do. I want it to get rid of any common signal. Uh, you also have to make sure that the gain of the op amps, uh, these two inverting, non-inverting op amps, you have to make sure that both of those gains are exactly the same. Otherwise, your output of your difference amplifier isn't going to be exactly uh, what you want it to be. So you have to match these gains uh, very well. And in order to match those gains very well, I still have that same problem where I need to be changing uh, two resistors at once because I need to change resistor R2. There's two resistor R2s here, or two resistor R1s here and here that I need to adjust the values of if I want to change these gains um, so that they're perfectly matched. Okay, so it's a good idea, a good concept on how to improve our different amplifier, but um, it needs a little bit of work. And all that we need to do is take a look at this ground connection at point X in the circuit. If I just take off that ground connection, then this is going to be a much better circuit. And this is how uh, you would actually realize an instrumentation amplifier. You still have uh, two non-inverting op amps at each input to our regular difference amplifier uh, op amp. But I just take off that ground connection and I have uh, a single resistor in common in the feedback networks on both of these non-inverting op amps. Okay, so let's see how that works. Okay, so let's write an equation uh, for I1. So what's the voltage at, at this node in the circuit? What's this voltage here? This, this voltage should be VI2 because of the virtual short between these two terminals. Okay, so I1 is VI2, and I need to subtract the voltage at the other side. So that's this voltage here. And what's the voltage at this node? That should be VI1 because of the virtual short uh, for this op amp A1. And then I need to divide by 2R1. Okay, so I know what, what I1 is. And since I know I1, uh, I can figure out what these two voltages are, V0 sub 1 and V0 sub 2. So V0 sub 1 is going to be, if I do a, a KVL, I'm going to do a KVL around this loop. It's VI sub 1 minus I1 times R2. And I can do something similar to get V0 sub 2. That will be uh, VI2 plus I1 times R2. Mm. 
Okay, and now let's look at v naught sub 2 minus v naught sub 1. So using these two equations, that would be 2i1 times r2. Uh, plus the difference in the input voltages. Okay, if we substitute for I1 now, then I'll get 2R2 over 2R1 times VI2 minus VI1. And then I have the second bracket. Or I can write this as 1 plus R2 over R1. Oops. times the differential voltage. And this VID is VI2 minus VI1. Everything okay so far? Okay, now I'm going to go to the next slide. I also know that the final output voltage, V0, is going to be R4 over R3 times V0 sub 2 minus V0 sub 1. Because this is a, our difference amplifier configuration. This is the output voltage for our difference amplifier. <coughs> So if I substitute from the previous the equations from the previous slide, then this will be one plus v naught sub two minus v naught sub one is one plus r two over r one times v i d. So if I want to get From this equation, I can then get differential gain by just moving VID over to the left-hand side. And then finally, if I make uh, one more uh, adjustment to this equation, so I'm going to say that uh, R1 and R2 here don't have to be uh, equal to one another. Um, so this R2 can be R2 prime. And this 2R1 could be split into one resistor R1 and one resistor R1 prime. Then you can expand out the second term. But you can also make it so that it looks like this equation here. And this R1 uh, just needs to be one resistor. So I can change my, my differential gain by changing one resistor, one physical resistor, which is R1, which is this resistor here. And that will end up adjusting my gain. For all the other resistors, I have to change two resistors. If I change resistor R2, both this resistor uh, here and this resistor have the same value R2. So I have to change two resistors in order to change uh, this numerator. And R3 and R4, there's two R3s here. There's two R4s here. So if I want to change either the numerator or denominator of this term, 
then I have to change two resistors at once. But if I just change the value of this single resistor here, I can change uh, the value of my differential gain. So L1 can be a single resistor, and I can adjust that one resistor if I want to change differential gain in this circuit. So that's one advantage of the instrumentation amplifier. What's a disadvantage? Any disadvantages to this? Or would I always want to make an instrumentation amplifier instead of my single stage uh, op amp difference amplifier? It's not that technical of an answer. More components. More components means it takes longer to make it. Like if you had to make this circuit in the lab versus a different amplifier, it's going to take you longer. So same thing with manufacturing. It's going to take you longer to make it. It requires three op amps now instead of one. So you've added more to your costs your manufacturing costs as well, just based on parts. So it has a, a higher input resistance, and it's easier to adjust the gain, but the trade-offs are that it's now more complex, and it costs more to make. OK, let's check out the, the common mode rejection of the instrumentation amplifier, just to make sure it's functioning as a good difference amplifier. Uh, so let's say that VI1 and VI2 are equal to one another. Okay, if those two are equal to one another, then that means that the current I1 is going to be zero because my voltage at this point is VI2, my voltage at this point is VI1, but they're both equal to one another, so there's no potential difference across. Uh, this resistor to R1. So I1 is going to be equal to zero. If that's true, then we had written that V0 sub 1 is equal to VI1 minus I1 times R2. And we also wrote that V0 sub 2 was VI sub 2 plus I2 R2. And I1 is going to 0, so V0 sub 1 is equal to VI1, and V0 sub 2 is equal to VI2. Okay, and our output voltage is R4 over R3 times V0 sub 2 minus V0 sub 1, and this is equal to VI2, this is equal to VI1, and we just said that VI2 and VI1 are equal, so these two are equal, so this whole term in the bracket will go to zero. Okay, so that means that the output of this is going to be zero if VI1 and VI2 are equal to one another. Or another way of saying that is the common mode gain, which is the output voltage divided by my common mode signal. is zero. Just like our, our single stage uh, difference amplifier. Now, it's easier, it's a little bit easier to achieve, remember this is, this is our theoretical common mode gain, and if I have a mismatch in resistors, um, then I'm not going to get 
to this ideal value. So I still have the, the same problem as I did with my original difference amplifier because that means that this R3 and this R4 need to have the exact same value and this R3 and this R3 need to have the exact same value in order for this common mode gain to be zero. But I'm not making it worse by uh, having uh, this, this input stage because uh, this part that I'm circling right now, uh, this is going to be true no matter what. If, if the values of R2 don't match, if these two values of R2 don't match, it's still going to be the same because of the fact that uh, I'm making I1 equal to 0 because VI2 and VI1 are, are the same. So it doesn't really matter what the value of R2 is in order to satisfy these equations that I've boxed here. So I have the same issue with, with common mode uh, gain as I did with my normal difference amplifier, but I didn't make it worse, even though I have more resistors here. Any questions on this? Okay, let's go through some examples. Okay, let's look at our, our single stage difference amplifier again. Um, so we made this difference amplifier in the lab, and uh, you made it so that all these resistors have uh, are equal to 10k. So every single resistor here is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. But your resistors have tolerances on them, depending upon the color of that that band. So you're either using uh, the silver band resistors, which means 10% tolerance in the value, or the gold band resistors, which have a 5% tolerance. That means we're going to have some finite common mode gain. Okay, so my question is, what is the, the worst case value of the common mode gain uh, for each tolerance? So let's assume they're, they're all gold band resistors or they're all silver band resistors. Okay, so here's our equation for common mode gain. And I'm going to show this equation again on the next slide. Same equation here. Uh, just a little bit of algebra has been done on it. Okay, so we're trying to find out when the maximum, the worst case, which is the maximum common mode gain value, is going to occur. So if I rearrange, if I look at this equation, uh, this common mode gain is going to be at a maximum when this ratio and this ratio are at their smallest values. Okay, so I know that, uh, let's see, if I look at the ratio of R3 to R4, I know it's going to have a certain range. Um, and what is that range going to be defined by? Yes, so it's going to be defined uh, when one of the resistors is at one uh, edge of the tolerance and the other resistor is at the opposite side. Okay, so I'm going to get the, the minimum value of this when R3 has its smallest value, right? So it's its, it's its written value of 10K minus the tolerance. And that will be, it will be at its absolute smallest if at the same time uh, R4 is at its, its a stated value of 10K plus the, the tolerance amount. And uh, I just care about the minimum value of R3 over R4, so let's get rid of that. 
there, there's actually a range here, but we're only concerned with the low end of it. Okay, and then same thing with R2 over R1. Oops. Uh, this is going to be the minimum value is the value minus the tolerance or the value plus the tolerance. Okay, so my maximum common mode gain is going to occur in R3 over R4 and R2 over R1 are both equal to 10 kilo ohms minus the tolerance over 10 kilo ohms plus the tolerance. Okay, so that's rewritten here in the second line. We can write that mathematically in this third line where the T is just going to be the tolerance value and we're plugging in all of those uh, or the second line into the first equation. And so if we plug all of that in, then you'll come out with for the gold band resistors that have a 5% tolerance, my common mode gain is going to be about 0.1. And if you use the silver band 10% tolerant resistors, then your maximum or your worst case common mode gain is going to be about 0.2. So they seem pretty low, but in order to really uh, quantify this, we need to look at what the uh, common, uh, sorry, what the difference amplification term is. Um, but we don't have time to do that this time, so we'll continue on here next time.